Caitlin Clark has been dubbed the golden goose of the WNBA by Stephen A. Credit is due to Smith for the significant increase in the league's popularity. The statistics following her arrival were remarkable, with fans anticipating the significant impact she would make, drawing on the influence from her college days at Iowa. Now that Clark has joined the WNBA, her impact on the popularity of college basketball is increasingly evident, especially in the viewership of Iowa's games. One of her Iowa teammates held a different belief before the season opener, creating a noticeable contrast. Sports Media Watch has published a detailed report that examines viewer trends and statistics in a variety of sports, with a focus on women's college basketball. The Sports Media Watch report noted that ESPN2 attracted an average of 203,000 viewers for the Iowa-Virginia Tech game last Sunday, marking the Hawkeyes' first Nielsen-rated game this season. In comparison, the same matchup during the previous season, aired on ESPN on a Thursday night, garnered 570,000 viewers for Iowa. This signifies a significant decrease of 64%. The most apparent challenge is Caitlin Clark's absence from Iowa's roster this season. During the 2023-2024 season, Caitlin Clark led Iowa to a historic victory over Nebraska in the final of the Big Ten Women's Basketball Tournament, establishing a new standard. The game attracted a noteworthy 3.02 million viewers on CBS, marking it as the highest-watched women's basketball game on the network since the iconic UConn-Tennessee matchup in 1999. Last season's NCAA championship finale was particularly noteworthy, drawing in approximately 19 million viewers for the thrilling matchup between South Carolina and Iowa. Despite the anticipation for this season's opening games and the sellout crowds at Iowa's home games, reports indicate that TV viewership numbers have not reached the same levels as those during Clark's tenure, falling significantly lower. The decrease in viewership may have been expected by many, but it serves as a harsh reality check for the program. Not only has the program lost Clark, but also the legendary head coach Lisa Bluter, who retired after last season's national championship game defeat. Despite the Hawkeyes consistently selling out home games at the Carver Hawkeye Arena due to the unwavering support from Iowa fans, the same cannot be said for television viewership. The undeniable impact of the Caitlin Clark effect is evident, as the reigning row tie has recently gained attention not only in basketball but also in the world of golf, making waves with her appearance at the Annika event. The golf tournament's namesake, legendary golfer Annika Sorenstam, expressed gratitude for the participation of the Indiana Fever star, stating, I am very thankful to her for taking the time to be part of our event. Even Nelly Korda, an experienced professional, recognized the 22-year-old's magnetic influence. Korda expressed admiration for the size of the crowd that Clark had attracted, stating that it was a compelling experience to witness in person. Tennis star Caroline Dolhide is enthusiastic about the opportunity to partner with Clark and believes their collaboration will attract a larger audience. In 2024, the Indiana Fever and Chicago Sky players achieved remarkable success in women's basketball, drawing large crowds to arenas, setting record-breaking jersey sales, and achieving impressive TV ratings. Their rivalry reminiscent of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson has brought new life to the game in recent years. However, Clark and Reese's influence on women's sports extends far beyond their professional careers. The NCAA Women's National Championship game in 2023, featuring an intense matchup between Iowa and LSU, marked the moment when Clark's name gained widespread recognition. Reese, a former standout player for the Tigers, also garnered national attention when she provocatively gestured towards her ring finger in reference to the championship ring she would soon receive following LSU's 102-85 victory. Reese's iconic You Can't See Me gesture was a pivotal moment not only in her heated rivalry with Clark, but also in the realm of women's basketball at large. The 6 feet 3 inches forward acknowledges that this game remains the most significant of her career, as she confided to the Wall Street Journal, that changed my life. With an audience of 9. 9 million witnessing the pivotal game, from her trademark hand gesture to the ultimate victory, the landscape of women's basketball was forever altered. My life underwent a complete transformation as a result of that game. Clark was drafted at number 7 overall in the 2024 WNBA draft. During their first year in the WNBA, Clark and Reese faced off four times, with the Fever coming out victorious in three matchups. Rookie of the Year Clark recorded an average of 21 points, 7 rebounds, and 10 assists when playing against Reese, who averaged 14 points, 13 rebounds, and 2 assists in these head-to-head -head contests. These memorable battles trace back to their days playing in AAU. Despite competing against each other for most of their careers, Reese expressed a desire to join forces with Clark in a move that could potentially redefine the league and the sport. Caitlin and I have been competing against each other since childhood. 
It's always been fiercely competitive, we are both strong competitors who have attracted a large following to the league. I believe this trend will continue. I look forward to the possibility of us becoming teammates in the future. Upon hearing Reese's enlightening remarks, fans took to the internet to express their opinions, praising her astute business acumen. Another individual added that she observes the movement. A potential collaboration between Reese and Clark in basketball would be a groundbreaking decision with implications rarely witnessed in the sport. This union could be likened to significant moves such as Kevin Durant's joining the 73-9 Golden State Warriors in 2016 or LeBron James forming a big three in Miami with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in 2010. However, at this point, the idea of a trade bringing Reese and Clark together remains purely a fantasy. Both The Fever and Sky have appointed new head coaches for the upcoming 2025 season, with a focus on utilizing Clark and Reese to enhance their performance compared to last season. Chicago ended in 10th place last season with a 13-27 record, missing the playoffs, while the Fever were eliminated in the first round by the Connecticut Sun. Clark and Reese, potentially forming a potent duo in the WNBA, could have significant impacts on and off the court. Despite their past rivalry, they united on Team WNBA during the league's All-Star game against the U.S. women's national team in July, marking only the eighth instance of two WNBA rookies being on the All-Star roster. They achieved a feat that eluded countries like France, Australia, and Nigeria in the Olympics by defeating the current roster of Team USA, which includes star players Diana Taurasi, Asia Wilson, and Brianna Stewart, with a final score of 117-109. to It's amazing playing alongside Clark, whenever she has possession, I eagerly seek my chance because I trust her passes, Reese commented on their partnership. She truly enhances the experience on the court. In the future, we will have many opportunities to collaborate and engage with one another. Hopefully, we will achieve our goal of becoming Olympians together in four years. Reese expressed this optimism despite not making the gold medal winning Olympics roster for Team USA. Head coach Cheryl Reeves' decision to field a more experienced roster for the Paris tournament proved to be successful, with Team USA emerging victorious. While Clark and Reese narrowly missed out on the 2024 team, they are expected to secure spots for LA28, assuming they maintain their current form and remain injury-free. By the time the 2028 Los Angeles Summer Games arrive, Clark will be 26 and Reese will be 28, primed to potentially have secured multiple WNBA championships and MVP titles, possibly even playing on the same team as they enter their athletic prime. That remains four years into the future. Currently, both athletes are focused on pursuing opportunities in the WNBA, and Reese is also considering joining the new 3-on-3 three -three basketball league, Unrivaled. Reese has made a commitment to participate in this league, which provides equity for players and showcases 36 WNBA players across six teams. The league is set to begin in January in Miami and will span over eight weeks, including playoffs. The roster for the upcoming event is nearly complete, with 32 out of 36 spots filled by notable WNBA players. All eyes are now on Clark, as her decision to participate could potentially result in her and Reese being teammates sooner than anticipated. With Stephanie White, the 2023 WNBA Coach of the Year, now leading the Indiana Fever, Caitlin Clark is primed for a breakout second year. The current Rookie of the Year made a significant impact on the league in 2024, establishing lofty expectations for her future career. Additionally, Clark was recognized with a first-team All-WNBA selection in addition to her rookie accolade. She was the first rookie to be acknowledged with this recognition since Candace Parker in 2008. Clark is only the second member of the Fever to be chosen for an all-WNBA team, following in the footsteps of team legend Tamika Catchings. Moving forward, there are many opportunities for both Clark and White to develop and grow. White is set to rejoin the team in 2025, following her successful coaching tenure with the Fever in 2015 and 2016, during which the team made two playoff appearances. White led Indiana to the WNBA Finals in her inaugural year as head coach, marking it as the most successful season in franchise history. This prediction may not be considered as audacious for a player of Clark's caliber, as he was already a topic of discussion during his rookie year. It is quite evident that she is the top point guard in the league, as indicated by her nomination to the All-WNBA First Team. In 2024, Clark placed fourth in the MVP voting, following Brianna Stewart, Nafisa Collier, and the unanimous winner Asia Wilson. During her time with the Sun, White guided Alyssa Thomas to two top five finishes in the end-of-season MVP standings. Notably, nearly every significant contributor from Connecticut experienced significant statistical growth under her leadership. White is undoubtedly a standout in the league when it comes to nurturing young talent and maximizing her players' potential. Clark's chances of winning the award hinge on the Fever's performance. 
simply finishing the year with a 20-20 record is not sufficient. One seed in order to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament, it is essential for our team to aim for a top half placement in the league, while additional improvements to the team would also be beneficial. Clark possesses the necessary talent to achieve this goal. She is a strong candidate for an MVP award, with its attainment being a certainty, the only unknown factor being the timing. White is the coach who will refine her skills. Clark's performance on the offensive end is nearly flawless, showcasing a skill set that leaves little room for criticism. At the start of her professional career, her shooting statistics were underwhelming. However, following the Olympic break, she propelled Indiana to the top offensive ranking in the league single-handedly. Her primary focus has consistently been on improving defensive skills. During her rookie season, Clark recorded a defensive rating of 106. 6. The aforementioned figure represented the lowest statistic among point guards who began at least 20 games in 2024. Clark's defense requires significant improvement at this stage of her career, and expecting her to excel as an elite defender in her second year is unrealistic. Fortunately, White has consistently demonstrated a strong focus on defense throughout his coaching career. All of her teams exhibit exceptional defensive skills and excel in fast transitions. Dijonai Carrington, known for her impressive fourth-year improvement resulting in an All-Defense nomination and the 2024 Most Improved Player Award, epitomized the qualities of a Stephanie White guard. While Clark may not reach Carrington's defensive prowess, she possesses the physical potential to exceed her current performance. She should prioritize the weight room during the 2024 offseason to address her lack of size as a guard. If she demonstrates this ability, she is already excelling as a rebounder and has displayed moments of quick reflexes. She does not need to reach the level of Gary Payton. Instead, she simply needs to enhance her skills to prevent becoming a defensive target each time she goes down the court. No player in the history of the WNBA has achieved an average of a triple-double. Only 46 of them have been recorded throughout history, and Thomas holds the record with 15. During her initial season with the white team, she nearly achieved a triple-double average with 15. 5 points, 9. 9 rebounds, and 7. 9 assists per game. She also established a new record that year for the highest number of triple-doubles in a season, achieving a total of 5. It isn't guaranteed that Clark will achieve a Russell Westbrook-level performance, but it is plausible that she could come close to it. In his rookie season, Clark averaged 19. 2 points, 5. 7 rebounds, and 8. 4 assists per game. That represents the pinnacle of achievement for a newcomer in this professional sports league. In order to increase her proximity to the basket, Clark must focus on enhancing her rebounding skills. With a collegiate average of 7. 1 rebounds per game, she possesses evident potential to excel in this area. Should Clark dedicate herself to an effective off-season regimen and focus on strength training, she may find it easier to secure rebounds in the upcoming year, 2025. However, it is unlikely that she will achieve an average of a triple-double in her performance. No player has ever achieved an average of 10 assists per game in a single season. There has never been a player similar to Clark in the past, she will approach much closer than many people may be comfortable with. Pair this forecast with our expectation that Clark will surpass Courtney Vandersloot's record for most assists per game in a single WNBA season. Caitlin Clark, a standout player for the Indiana Fever, showcased her talent and sense of humor during the LPGA Pro-Am event at the Annika on Wednesday, held at Pelican Golf Club in Bel Air, Florida. Renowned for her prowess on the basketball court, Clark playfully suggested a potential pivot to professional golf during her WNBA offseason. After a challenging beginning, she exhibited a carefree demeanor towards her golf performance in front of a substantial audience. On the third tee, Clark miss hit a shot but lightened the mood by joking with the onlookers, remarking, it's not fair, I should be allowed to advance, as reported by Scott Agnes of Fieldhouse Files on X, previously known as Twitter. The joke elicited laughter from the audience, demonstrating Clark's ability to accept her amateur status among golf professionals. Clark, who describes herself as an average golfer with a handicap of approximately 16, has recognized her lack of experience in golf despite her deep love for the sport. During the LPGA Women's Leadership Summit, Clark acknowledged her passion for golf but expressed that her performance on the course varies. I'm confident in my strength and ability to hit the ball, she stated, as noted by ESPN's Mark Schlebaugh. The usual trajectory is not a straight line. The Fever star will be playing alongside prominent figures in the golf world at the event, including world number one. Nelly Korda played the front nine while 10-time major champion Annika Sorenstam played the back nine. 
Clark emphasized that, despite competing with top athletes in the sport, her main priority is to savor the experience and maintain her no. Achieving one main objective. One simply takes the stage and anticipates a positive outcome. I want to avoid hitting anyone with a golf ball. One priority, to provide exceptional customer service to all clients. I prioritize this is my number one task, she stated. Feel free to enjoy the process. This is not a matter of great importance. Many individuals would greatly desire to be in my current position or situation. This is not Clark's initial venture into the realm of professional golf tournaments. In 2023, she took part in a pro-am event at the PGA Tour's John Deere Classic, paired with emerging talent Ludwig Obaria and Iowa native Zach Johnson. During the event, Sorenstam, who was one of Clark's course partners, provided words of encouragement. Sorenstam remarked, As an athlete accustomed to performing in front of crowds, I have no doubt that you thrive under pressure. As a senior golfer, I have been diligently honing my skills to maintain peak performance on the course. It's all about enjoying the game. Indiana Fever guard Caitlin Clark has risen to stardom in the world of sports, yet former New York Knicks guard Walt Clyde Frazier remains skeptical of her burgeoning reputation. This was stated during the MSG Network broadcast of the team's matchup against the Indiana Pacers. The broadcast featured Clark seated courtside at Gainbridge Fieldhouse for the game. During the game, the Knicks play-by-play -play announcer, Mike Breen, highlighted her presence with the crowd's enthusiastic response, while Frazier, the color commentator, shared a humorous remark. Clark was in attendance with her boyfriend, fellow Iowa alum Connor McCaffrey, who serves as an assistant coach for the Butler men's basketball team. Frazier, a cherished figure in franchise history, has been a prominent member of the MSG Network broadcasting team since his retirement. Despite his age of 79, Frazier maintains the resilient defensive mindset that earned him a spot on the NBA's all-defensive team seven times. If he can still outmaneuver Clark, his phone will be inundated with calls from the WNBA. In September, Clark concluded an exceptional debut season in the league by receiving the Rookie of the Year award. He achieved this accolade by averaging 19. 2 points, 5. 7 rebounds, and 8. 4 assists per game. Regardless of the impact of Clark's support on the Pacers, Indiana advanced to a 5-5 record for the year by defeating the Knicks 132-121 on Sunday. Tyrese Halliburton, a close friend of Clark, showcased his skills with 35 points and 14 assists, while Benedict Mataran contributed a game-high 38 points. Mataran's impressive performance highlights his development since being a 2022 lottery pick, indicating a significant improvement in his third year. His average of 19. 4 points per game in the initial 10 games of the season marks a noteworthy improvement from the 14. 5 points he averaged in the previous season of 2023-2024.